We're going to talk about the different causes of prolonged uh, stages of labor and also the way that induction is usually achieved. So the first stage should normally progress at a rate of more than one centimeter dilation of the cervix every two hours. And it's defined as poor progression or a prolonged first stage if it's progressing much slower than this. And causes include usually dysfunctional uterine activity where the contractions aren't um, quite strong enough to um, push the baby downwards. Um, it can also be due to an issue with the size of the baby relative to the size of the pelvis, referred to as a cephalopelvic disproportion. And it can also be due to the fact that the baby may not necessarily be quite in the right position. So they may be uh, breech delivery or presenting themselves in, in, a, in a way that's um, not particularly easy to go down into the birth canal. The second stage of labor is defined as being prolonged if it lasts more than three hours in, in a first time um, pregnancy and more than two hours if uh, the patient has given birth before. And again, causes include um, quite often dysfunctional uterine activity. It can be due to the shape of the pelvis itself, and it can also be due to the perineum being quite tough and resistant and not actually um, loosening up quite as much as you would expect uh, for the head to be able to be delivered. The third stage is defined as prolonged if it's lasted more than 30 minutes uh, if active management is opted for, or more than 60 minutes if passive management is chosen. So the most common causes are uterine atony, where the uterus uh, fails to contract down on itself after delivery. Um, it can also be due to placental abnormalities, such as placenta accreta. So we're going to move on to talk about induction of labor because this is something that uh, isn't necessarily quite as prescriptive as you would expect it to be. There is somewhat of an um, escalation that is followed in most cases. However, it can vary quite considerably uh, depending on the circumstance and depending how the labor is actually progressing. So the first thing that is done quite often is something called a membrane sweep. And this is when um, a midwife or an obstetrician will insert their fingers uh, into the uterus itself and try and actually detach the membranes from um, the inner wall of the uterus and the cervix. So the idea is that this will cause a release of various different hormones that can actually make labor progress a little bit quicker. So that is often the first port of call. If that alone is unsuccessful after 24 hours, then a prostaglandin pessary may be inserted, and this is usually a small um, strip of tissue which is impregnated with prostaglandins and it's inserted into the vagina, and the, the local release of prostaglandins can get the um, labor going. If that is also ineffective, then a prostaglandin gel or tablet can be inserted into the vagina, and this can also be repeated after about six hours. If all of these measures are unsuccessful, then artificial rupture of membranes may be considered. So this involves using something called an amni hook, which is um, a device that is inserted um, into the vagina through the cervix, and it's actually used to physically break down the membranes. And uh, a bit like the membrane sweep, but um, at a much higher level, the rupture of the membranes triggers a massive surge of hormones that can actually trigger labor and make the labor progress a bit faster and make the uterus contract down harder. If artificial rupture of membranes is also unsuccessful, then syntocinin may be considered, and that's an oxytocin analogue that helps actually contract the uterus downwards. So like I said earlier, this isn't necessarily going to follow the order that I've shown on screen right now. However, this is the order that is quite commonly used, and it can vary a little bit depending on uh, how the patient is progressing. So they may not necessarily need to go all the way through this, they may be able to skip steps, etc. But I think it's useful to have it on one screen. 